Hello my glorious celestial diamonds. Welcome to my 18 plus psychic love reading channel. Please read the description for all relevant information regarding this reading. Now this is my deep reading that's called a snapshot reading with mermaid and dolphin cards, messages from your angel cards and tarot cards and some charms. And it's kind of like a, a snapshot deep insight into your current love connection with this love interest which is obviously at distance separation has trouble conflict something and my my readings address complex issues okay it's not just oh yeah you're gonna meet up and you're gonna see them and it's there's esoteric uh, advice and advice and tips and inside information from the psychic realm okay so before i read i always connect with my guides even though i don't do clairvoyant visions in this specific reading and if you would like my clairvoyant visions um i have a, a folder called um clairvoyant timeless readings or something like that anyway on my youtube channel and you can go and and you get more of my clairvoyance which i do in the beginning and about halfway through the reading with my guides and clairvoyant visions are visual i see things i also hear and sense things um and i connect with my guides and then i'm channeled information all the way through the reading anyway okay and i do psychic scribbles and and things like that so because i connect to the psychic realm with a clairvoyant vision i do get sometimes something regarding this uh, this specific reading this snapshot reading and what I got was, because I represent the feminine energy, I got that I was very serene and graceful. And as I was entering the realm, going through all the different stages I go through to enter the psychic realm, um, I felt very serene and graceful. And I, I, I entered through into the, the, the final psychic realm, which is a purple realm of energy with a lot of grace, no rush, very mellow and chilled, serene, graceful, that kind of energy. And then what I was doing was I was taking off my coat. And I don't wear a coat normally, but I was an energetic coat. And I took it off and I felt that I wanted to just throw the coat away, but I didn't. I checked through the pockets I found some coins and I put them to the side. Anything I found of value, I, I took it out, put it to the side, and instead of throwing it away, I very serenely folded the coat very neatly, and I'm really crap at folding in real life, so this isn't me for sure. And I put the coat, Oh, not away, a kind of down and away. Like I just removed it from myself. The coat was there, folded all neat. And I I just put it away. Like I took what I gained of value and I put it away. So to me that means you've gained some valuable insights and information regarding this romantic connection. Maybe you learned something about yourself, maybe you learned how to let go, maybe you learned uh, to control your emotions or to just accept reality or something. You've learned something of value anyway that has improved you as a person and put you in a better place as a person, like on your journey as an individual. I'm not talking about as part of this connection. And you entered the psychic, the second psychic realm where my guides are, because I go and check my guide and I say to my guide, you know, Adam, you know, can you give me inside information, helpful information that will empower the diamonds regarding this specific reading. And what you did was you fell back into the arms of a masculine who had to catch you so you wouldn't fall because you just fell back with trust. You trusted that he would catch you. And you didn't even doubt that he would catch you, but he was surprised that he had to catch you. And then he felt the burden of having to drag you along with him backwards. He was going in a backwards fashion and you're, how am I gonna show you this? My, my famous, um, how, I, how I show what the masculines and feminines do with my little charms. That's your masculine. 
That's you. You fell back into him and he caught you in his arms and then he's sort of dragging you along like this. And he was surprised that and you're all serene, graceful, light energy, glowing, smiling, happy, at peace. I'm not even joking, it was so weird. And he was all like, shit, I've got to carry the burden now. I've got to carry her forward now. She ain't doing shit. She's just thrown herself into my power. And it's up to me to carry this on now. So this is what I'm getting. <laughs> Diamond. Did you surrender to this connection and just quit making effort and left it in a way, however it is you maneuvered this situation when you last contacted your, had contact with your loving trust, you maneuvered it in a way that leaves it up to him to take control. And I'll give you an example because it might be hard to decipher what I'm saying based on on that vision there's an example where there was this guy interested in me okay and he made the move first but then I found the conversation was happening because I always took the lead to open a new subject or to say something that required him to answer back even though he initiated everything and I thought hang on a minute, am I the chaser here, the pursuer, or is he? He's the one who came to me, but he's expecting me to have the burden of this conversation to keep it going. What happens if I just don't do that and I leave the ball in his court? So what I did was I designed a reply to his message that left it up to him to start a new subject and continue this conversation, this messenger, stupid conversation, whatever the fuck it was. Anyway, so I did it in a way, very polite, very friendly, and I, uh, the way I, I ended it, that, that, that conversation, he had to start a new conversation. And he didn't. Okay? He didn't, he didn't, and I thought, well, you're a weakling, you're not a man. You're not a man because, yeah, you came, but then you expect me to carry it on and take the lead and lead this into something. I'm not a pursuer. I feel like I'm like the empress. I'm a, I'm a submissive, receptive in a relationship. It doesn't mean I don't take initiative. Yeah, I'll take their dick out there, let me suck it. I'm not, you know, it's not that. I'm not gonna take the sole burden Okay, they, they talk, I talk. Sometimes I take initiative, sometimes they take initiative. It's kind of like a quid pro quo. You do it, I do it, I do it, you do it. But it's fair, I'm not counting. I'm not saying, no, you did it three times, I did it two times, no. But I do expect an effort from the masculine, okay? So, I thought, well, you're not man enough for me. You can't even think of something to say or you don't want to take responsibility to do it What? Well, because it means something. Fine. You don't belong with me. A man like that doesn't belong with me. A man like that doesn't belong with me because he's not willing to make the effort, okay? So I could have easily just messaged him and it would have carried on and we could have been talking, maybe even gone on dates. But he's a weak willy winky as far as I'm concerned. He's not my type. I'm not, I'm not attracted to him, okay? He doesn't attract me. It's not all about, oh, I've got to attract the masculine. No, the, uh, the masculine's got to attract me too. Okay, that's just how I see it. So that's how I feel what, what you've done here, Diamond. You have somehow maneuvered the communication between your love interests in a way where it's up to him to take the lead and keep it going. And you always respond. If he says something, you respond, you're receptive. But he now suddenly feels the burden on his shoulders that if I want this connection to continue, I have to 
be the one making it go forward and bring this diamond with me. Do you understand? I hope you do. If, you, if not, write in the comments and I'll try and work on the way I communicate. So, after that long-winded explanation, let, let's get into the cards. Now, I've got the mermaid cards are on top, the angel cards are on the bottom. This is tranquility, and it says, make time to relax, be still, and enjoy your solitude indulging in much needed self-care and it's clarified by my coming into balance charm which means diamond that to me you've come into balance with this love connection you've looked at the realities and you've assessed them and you've drawn your conclusions that i don't want to interfere take make any initiative i'm fed up of bearing the brunt of the continuation of this connection and I'm just gonna chill, relax, I'm gonna enjoy my solitude, I'm gonna nurture myself and give myself what my love interest, what I would have liked from my love interest, I'm gonna give it to myself and I'm just gonna accept my reality and enjoy it. Uh, you've come in balance. You've you're not any more disturbed by this love interest. Okay, this love interest has been disturbing your emotional energy long enough. You've you've done everything you can, and it's still not moved forward the way that you would like it. So you've just accepted this is the way it is. My door's open. He wants to take initiative, and bring it forward it's up to him now and when he does communicate you communicate back very lovely your lovely self but you're chilled you're graceful you're serene and you're just gonna put yourself first you've come into balance with what's going on and you're leaving it to him now and you found you found peace in that it doesn't disturb your emotional um, energy anymore. You found peace in it that you've assigned the burden to him. He can deal with it. Okay? <laughs> That's what I'm getting. So, the tranquility card is clarified by the three of coins or pentacles, whatever the fuck it's called. It says here that you have confronted the more difficult aspects of your love interest. And in the past, you committed to work through the problems that you found, okay? That, that is what happened, okay? That was your past. But you've come into balance. You've accepted these difficult aspects of your love interest. And you did everything you could. And now you're like, that's it. I'm done with what I did. I've done my part. Now it's up to him, okay? And then it's also clarified by the four, four of coins. And what happened was you felt that you loved your love interest more than they loved you. Because you put in more than they did and they didn't seem to match what you were putting in. And your love interest also seemed to be playing a bit of manipulative power games with you. But you've let them go. You're like, I'm not, I'm not playing these silly games anymore. He's hot, he's cold, he's hot, he's cold. He asks me out, doesn't follow through, or he makes promises and breaks them. I don't know what your love interest is doing, but whatever he's doing, these power little power games, ego games, you've just like, I'm not playing. I'm letting them go, ah, I'm not playing. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have a an Epsom salt bath, paint my nails, um, have a nice mug, mug of tea and watch a, a Christmas love movie on Netflix or something, you know, I'm just going to take care of myself, you know, and you, in the past, it's possible that the way you were, not, I wouldn't say pursuing, but it's like your love interest knew that you wanted them and that they weren't they know they're not making the effort to realize this connection. They kind of felt 
a bit pressured by this because they obviously weren't ready otherwise if they were ready they would you would be with them you'd be fucking them sucking them right now that's what you'd be doing and you're not so you stopped putting them under this little pressure you just let them go you're like ah, if he calls he calls if he doesn't call he doesn't call if he messages me i'll reply when i feel like it i might not even download the message straight away i'll whenever whatever it's not like he does anything anyway you've 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 just let it go you've stopped you know being their little puppy looking up at them with puppy dog eyes and every time they gave you a biscuit you're jumping up and down can't wait to eat it you're, you're just chilled you've let it all go so this is what's going on here which i like this energy you're in a good place i really do like it so what we've got now is Tranquility is followed by blessed change or blessed change, okay, which is quite exciting. I'm getting skin tingles on my legs and on my arms because that means an actual change is coming. And the fact that there's coins means it's to do with the earthly plane. So these church, I'm getting skin tingles, confirmation. These changes, this blessed change that is coming, is coming in your actual real life. It's not coming on your messenger or your social media account. You will see this change in your real life, this blessed change. So, a major life change, a major life change brings you great blessings. And it's clarified, and I'm getting skin tingles non-stop now, by this racehorse, which means that this blessed change is going to race in and catch you off guard it's just gonna psh, it's just gonna race into your life and catch you off guard okay so ace of coins let's read what my book love tarot says i mean uh, it's not exactly what it says i kind of edited and, and whatever and whatever an all embracing fulfilling union is now possible between you and your love interest because in the vision that I had before I started reading, he was dragging you forward. He might have been a bit miffed that you put all the weight on him and he has to do all the, the fucking work and lift your, your dead weight while you're in this angelic trance or whatever the fuck you were in, okay? But he was dragging you along. He's not letting you go and shutting the door on you and ignoring you. He literally was taking it on board even though he was a bit miffed that he had to, it's like, shit, and it's heavy, so it's obviously hard for him, okay, it's hard for this masculine energy, now, when I talk him and her, you know you can reverse the energies, and there's masculines and feminine bodies, and feminines and masculine body. just, and he, you, the diamond might actually resonate with what I'm saying about the masculine, and the mask, and the, or the diamond might resonate with what I'm saying about the feminine, please, you know, read my introduction video, it explains it all, because sometimes I get comments that, oh, I'm the one who did that. And it's like, well, you could have just reversed, you know, the energies and it would be you. <laughs> you know, you have to take it as it resonates, okay? So, that's exciting. A blessed change is coming racing in your life to bring you a major life train, change and great blessings. And that is clarified by this change being, I'm getting skin tingles, a fulfilling union between you and your love interest. Oh la di da, how things change when your energy comes into balance and you just let it go and let the masculine be the masculine. <laughs> you did all your work. You showed you were receptive, supportive, caring, loving, sweet, nurturing, sexy, fun, flirty, jokey, pretty. You've done all that. What more information do they need? They need to act or fuck off seriously okay then we've got clarified by the king of cups as well Ooh. now it says your connection is in the process of opening and expanding you and your love interest share a deep friendship with similar goals and views it feels like you have chosen your family now I feel that this love interest will not hold themselves back any longer from fulfilling their needs and their interest towards you, okay? Because they're coming racing in 
to bring you this blessed life change, which is a fulfilling union. Okay? So that's how that's clarified. Very exciting. Now, we've got the Dream Big card, and it says, let go of small thoughts about yourself and see yourself succeeding. Now, obviously, when you let go, and I'm getting, when I, when I had this thought, I had skin tingles, because obviously I think faster than I speak. And what I got was, one of the reasons you let go, when you folded that coat, and you took what was of value and you folded them, put it away. You felt lighter for it, actually. I think I forgot to say that. You felt lighter for it for taking that coat off. Your lovely bare skin, your little summery dress or whatever you're wearing, you felt lighter taking this coat off. That coat was burdening you, okay? But the reason you took it off is that you feel that you're not succeeding in this love connection. And you're like, I'm taking off the burden. This isn't working out and i'm just gonna put it away take what i've learned let go you know nurture myself relax be serene and peaceful because i can't i, I don't want to do that anymore i don't think it's going to work out you're very low but you're open to if a miracle happens because that's the kind of person you are diamond but this card is telling you let go of these small thoughts of yourself and see yourself succeeding and obviously it's preceded by the blessed change card which is telling you a major life change brings you a great blessing and a fulfilling union from this love interest who's decided to do something about it now okay and so it's telling you it will succeed so it's giving you faith don't think small thoughts see yourself succeeding because you came to this reading for inside information and it's clarified by my little couple kissing look oh and that bowl is full of so many charms and yet i got i got this charm okay the little couple kissing so you're going to be succeeding in this romantic connection to end up kissing your love interest in real life a missing piece of the puzzle is going to be revealed that will bring success. So this could be some kind of communication with your love interest that they're going to just admit to you everything they've been feeling and say, you know, possibly say, let's get together, let's explore the connection, something, okay? Because this information is going to be revealed to you, which will bring the success of this romantic connection. And it's clarified by the six of spades, which is the card of victory, no less. So success and victory. You can't make this shit up. I literally, they are all accidental. I do not, you know, I, they're all accidental the way they all fall. And they seem to match and tell this amazing story anyway. Um, but yeah, it's the card of victory. And it says, what you have worked for in your connection can become a reality now. Now, you can, and I got, when I said now, I got skin tingles on my legs, which means movement, okay? Now, you can experience the sudden breakthrough. Victory comes out of the bloom. The skin tingles are going crazy on my legs. Crazy. And what about this race horse when I said they're gonna, it's just gonna race in out of the blue? Out of the blue, out of, oh my God, my skin tingles are going crazy on my legs and on my arms amazing i mean this reading is fucking amazing fucking amazing i'm not even joking right so clarified by that amazingness let's move on to the um, messages from angel cards okay and we've got the card omega does it say omega yeah which again victory like we've got victory here success and we've got victory victory your desire is coming to fruition. Keep up the good work. So this chilling tranquility is the good work. And it's interesting that it is under tranquility as well. It is the good work. That is the good work. The fact that you're relaxed, you've let it go, you're serene, you're peaceful, you're graceful, and you've offloaded it onto your love interest to just take the reins take the reins look take the reins of the rate of the racehorse well that's what psychic waffle is it's channeling um psychic information and um it's gonna result in victory which is confirmed here as well 
I'm here. Major life change brings great blessing. You know, uh, fulfilling union. It's like union is, is, is here and it's here. And we've got the lover's card here. So it's like union, union. It's trying to drum it in your head. Union, union, union. Victory, success, blessed change. Race force out of the blue. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that is what is going on here. So it's clarified by the King of Swords. He looks a bit severe, this King of Swords. Now, it says here that you always knew what you wanted with this love interest. And there was this danger of your impatience, okay? And you were stubbornly pursuing your desires for this connection, okay? And unfortunately, at the time, you were all this full-on impatient, I want this guy, you know, I want this love interest. Your love interest didn't share the same desire as you. Like, he did want you. But he didn't have the same idea, fantasy, desire, expectations at that specific time. And that is why the connection was not realized, okay? Then and there. But, oh, and your love interest, for whatever reason, which I've seen what, what the reason is somewhere here, so I will tell you there are reasons. There's specific reasons that your love interest felt a little bit overwhelmed and overpowered by what they perceived as impatience of you and they reacted with resistance and even withdrawal okay now you carefully examined this situation okay and you stopped that's that when you examined the coat you decided that sorry you decided that i've checked out the reality of this situation, I've examined it, we're not in agreement, we're not in the same page. And the way I'm pushing myself forward all the time in this connection, it's not getting me anywhere. I feel like I'm losing my dignity as well. I'm flogging a dead horse. Here we go with the horse again. Um, and you decided to pull back and just focus on yourself, okay? Because you measured your goals against concrete realities, okay? And you changed your goal. You were like, okay, we're not on the same page. I know this love interest wants me because he won't fuck off. He's still in and out of my life. For whatever reason, he's undecided about progressing this connection. So I'm going to put myself first. I'm going to leave the door open to this love interest. I will communicate with them. But I'm not going to be that impatient, come on, when's this going to happen attitude. I'm chill. Whatever happens, happens. If it happens, when it happens, whatever the fuck. I'm just, I'm pulling out. I'm pulling out. I'm not going to be impatient. I'm not even going to be patient. I'm just going to live my life. And I will respond depending on how this love interest, what they communicate. I'll just respond in my own sweet time. That's how I'm handling it, okay? And what it's saying here is, you did not feel that this connection was unrealistic. You, could, you didn't throw it away. Like when you took the coat off, even though you took everything of value, and I told you I felt that you wanted to throw it away. Maybe at some point you wanted to throw it away and block them and do something, but you didn't in the vision. You folded it and put it aside. You did not think that it's completely dead. You did not think that it was unrealistic. You weren't as hopeful. You were like, okay, there's a chance it might not work out. It may end up being a dead end. But also, it's not unrealistic in that I'm going to throw it out. It's completely dead. There's like a 50-50 chance here. Okay. So you knew that at the right time, you could realize the victory. That's what you thought. So you acted in a way where you did not block this love interest. You didn't insult them. You didn't call them up on it. You didn't do anything that, and I, I felt um, a skin tingle on my legs. The actions you took basically were wise. You didn't cut off, I got, I got more skin tingles. You did not cut off the opportunity that this could happen at some future date. 
you didn't cut it off at all, okay? And that was a very wise decision which is going to help bring your victory because if you shut the door on this love interest, they wouldn't be able to come back now. They wouldn't feel that they, they can bring you forward. But the fact that you've been so receptive and nice and polite and graceful and sweet and friendly and all the things you've done, okay, um, that is what has, is going to help lead to, to victory, okay? You've been, you were patient, you checked it out, you were like, it could happen, but I'm not doing anything about it. I will just respond and, and see if, if, after all this work I've put in, if something happens. Now, I forgot to clarify this card by the charms. And regarding this victory and what's going to come into fruition, there is missing information you do not have okay you have one tiny bit of information basically your love interest disclosed to you something about one of the blocks as to what um was preventing them moving forward with you they revealed something but they didn't reveal everything there's one bit of information and three bits missing here so there's missing information but what the information is i don't know if this is the information you specifically have diamonds but the charm is clarified by my evil eye. And my evil eye is my charm for an ex. A, a, like a more jealous possessive ex. And this jealous possessive ex was one of the blocks to your... Rec to rec you know, realising this connection. But because there's victory, I feel that your love interest has dealt with it. Otherwise there wouldn't be victory. Yeah, I got skin tingle confirmation on my legs. They took action to deal with this X. So this X no longer hinders the realization and manifestation of this connection into the reality. And because of that, I'm getting skin tingles. Now you can have a victory. Your, your desire is coming to fruition. Keep up the good work. So that is a contributing factor, okay? Now, we've got the lovers. It's, the victory is clarified by the lovers. Now, there is a desire, attraction, conflict and striving for union with each other. Your love interest is on the same page as you and that's why there's a victory. Well, there's going to be a victory. Finally, you're on the same page. You're on different pages when you were here. That's why there wasn't a victory. And because of this X, that's why there wasn't a victory. But now, you're both on the same page. Your love interest wants it, you want it, and that's why there's going to be a victory. It says, this union is a mystery to be lived. Enjoy this love journey as it unfolds. Okay? So that's very positive as well. Okay. Now, we've got, who is this? Athena. Athena is what the fuck? What the fuck? The high priestess. Oh, I have got the high priestess. Okay. So we've got Athena, and it says here it is safe for you to be powerful. You know how to be powerful in a loving way. I really do sense that's what you've been doing. You've been loving and sweet and some people think, oh, by being loving, sweet, receptive, submissive, that that is a weakness, but it isn't, it's powerful because you can be vulnerable and authentic, but you don't take no shit. Once you've figured out it's not getting you anywhere by pursuing this love interest and being a bit impatient and taking the lead a bit, you drew back, you are powerful, you're safe in yourself. And the fact that you can take time to relax, be still and enjoy your solitude makes you powerful okay you're not a little weakling you can be in your solitude you might be sad a little bit initially until you come into balance but you can be in your solitude and that makes you powerful and your love interest seen that because he's seen that you've drawn back and left it all to him to sort out and he's realized you've outmaneuvered him for a start and you are powerful in your sweetness in your serenity in your grace in the fact that you can be alone is what makes you powerful I don't care if people think think that it's weak. It is not weak. You have to be very strong to be a vulnerable person, to be an authentic person. 
very strong. I've got a skin tingle. So that must be a necessary confirmation. So the fact that you've done it all in a loving way, it benefits others as well as yourself. You felt at comfortable being your feminine energy self, okay? It benefited you in that way that you could embody your femininity and it also benefited your love interest, okay? Because it, by being in your feminine, you're triggering him or maneuvering him into being in his masculine and the masculine is the go-getter, the action taker. So, yeah, you're powerful, okay? And what it says here, it's clarified by my heart of stone. For you to be able to draw back and be in solitude, you do need a heart of stone. You can't just be some soft, wussy, massive, squadgy, squeegee, gooey stuff and feminine. No, you're a powerful feminine. You're strong. You are hard as this stone. You can be if you want to be. But that doesn't mean you're not loving. It just means you have standards, boundaries and values and desires that you want to realise and you're not compromising. You're uncompromising. And you're hard hearted or hard as stone in the way that I'm not going to be chasing you. I'm not going to be um, crying over you. I'm not going to be whining and pining after you. I'm not going to be begging you. I'm not going to be you know, like a little lap dog. No, none of that. I'm a woman. I can, I can be in my solitude. I can nurture myself, give myself self-care. I can be loving. I can be feminine, but I can still be strong. You're clever now. You're clever. You've wised up. You're clever. It's clarified by my clever charm. You, you, you're doing it in a very clever way. You're doing it in a very strong way, in a very powerful way. That makes you very sexy and appealing to your love interest. So you're not only sweet and serene and graceful, you're strong, powerful, dynamic, independent. And that is sexy and that is balanced. To balance your sweetness with your, with your firmness, to balance your receptivity with your boundaries, like, no, I'm not doing that. It's all a balance, I and mean, you need to be wise to be able to do that. When shall I be? When shall I be more hard, and when shall I be soft? When? Well, you need wisdom. Without wisdom, you can't. You can't decide. You can't make the right decision of when to be hard to be soft. Let's just. I'll give you an example of a wrong decision, and I got skin tingle. When you give gave your love interest an ultimatum, if you don't do this, you think you're being strong. No, you're weak. Only a weak person will give an ultimatum. You don't get people with ultimatums. How do you get a kitten? You tempt it. You, you're, you're sweet. You're, you're harmless. They trust you. They slowly come towards you. Use your, use your cleverness for your advantage. And then what about if the kitten scratches you? Well, you punish it or you remove it. Whoa, you scratched me, I'm bleeding now. No, 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 really. go in your cage. Go, go over there, go in another room. Or I'll go in another room, no. That, that is what this being clever is. When to be hard, when to be soft. And you've mastered that. Doesn't matter if you know whether you mastered it or not. You might have done it on a subconscious level. Either way, that's what you've done. And it's clarified by the high priestess. Okay, and the high priestess, Obviously, she's someone with inside information, with wisdom, like a little sorceress, really, isn't she? She's kind of a bit of a know-it-all, but quietly intuitive, blah, blah, blah. Okay? But by being the high, high priestess, you respected your love interest freedom. You had the wisdom to develop a deep friendship that enriched your connection and drew your love interest to you and helped you develop a deep connection with them. Okay, and this card also says that this love interest may also be your divine celestial counterpart, which is quite exciting. So this kind of makes it like a higher level kind of connection. So, I mean, this is quite an amazing, um, so you've got the softness and the nurturing, taking care of yourself, but then you've got your dynamic power and intuition here. 
So you're very, very amazing balance. You and again the balance charm. You've come into balance with your feminine side. When you should be strong, when you should be soft, when you should be hard, when you should be sweet. You know, you you you've come into balance and you've got the wisdom and you can do that. And it's very attractive and seductive actually. Okay, that's what I'm getting for this. Okay, then we have. I hate this fucking card, Bridget. I actually knew someone called Bridget and we used to call her bitch it because she was such a bitch. So I hate the card Bridget because it's like, she's she's so negative. She's a negative Nelly card. Like, caution is warranted. Look deeper into this situation before proceeding further. It's like a warning, but no. I've decided to perceive it in a different way. It's all about reframing. It's inside information. So look, into, look deeper into the situation before you proceed. It's trying to help you, okay? I'm still, still pisses me off when I see her, but anyway. And it's clarified by some very interesting charms, which I said might be the missing information. I mean, there's three bits of information missing here, and then I've got three charms. <laughs> so that's quite a coincidence. <laughs> so one of the inside information is this X, obviously. But what we've got is a hole in the heart. So even though the heart's a nice gem, there's kind of like a hole in the middle. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Maybe if I put it on paper. Can you see it? Like there's a, oh, hang on. There's a hole right bang in the middle of that heart. Okay. So um, obviously your love interest some kind of trauma. They've been, that's what, when, when a man doesn't realise a connection with you but won't fuck off and is in and out of your life, something's keeping them back from realising the connection. They're in a confused state. Why are they in a confused state? Well, something's bugging them. Okay, something's holding them back. One of the things is that ex has created that hole, that gaping hole in their heart. So they obviously don't trust enough. They don't trust the love connections. They don't trust diamonds. They don't trust... They've, they've got trust issues, okay? They've been hurt and it hasn't even healed because otherwise it, would, it wouldn't have a hole because I'm sure I've got other charms with the heart so I haven't got holes. And it's unhealed and so they obviously have some fears and trust issues and you're going to need to look into this and address them in your connection with this love interest and make sure that they don't cause damage to this connection so that they're not affecting it in a negative way. It's kind of like fear and love doesn't exist at the same time. You can only be in fear or in love. If you're in fear, then you're not in love. You're self-protecting and you can't be loving and giving in this connection and nurture the connection because you're too busy being in fear of self-protecting. And so you need to talk to them when they go into that. It's something that you need to look deep into. You need to address it. You need to have a plan of action when it comes up, what you're gonna do together as a couple to work through that so it doesn't ruin the connection. Okay, that's your inside information. Then we've got the marriage charm. Now, because of this hole in the heart, your love interest may not want a commitment. You need to talk about this and you need to agree before you explore the connection. Are you okay with that? Because he might be like, I don't want it now, but that doesn't mean he's going to want it in the future. It's again that 50-50. He may go either way. He may want it or he may not. Are you willing to take that risk? Are you happy to explore the connection without knowing you're on the same page about marriage? Again, please look deeper into it before proceeding. You do not have to have a connection with, it, love, with this love interest if you feel this is a very important factor. You might be young, you might want to start a family. Like me, I'm, I've had a family. I'm a single parent. If I met someone who said he didn't want marriage, I, I probably wouldn't give a fuck. I've already been married. I've had the kids. I'm not having any more kids. I don't know if I can even have them anyway. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. But I'm too old to have kids. I don't really want them at this age. I've been there, I've done that. I just want to have fun. I don't want to... I just want to fuck and have a romance. I don't really want another baby and vomit and shit for 10 years seriously and doctors and I, I, I just I've done it all I don't need to do that again so it wouldn't bother me but 
Does it bother you? Are you younger? Do you want to start a family? What if you waste years with this love interest because you fancy the pants off them and you have this connection, but then they don't want to marry you and that upsets you and, and you've got to think of these things. So please look at your individual situation and before you proceed further, you do not have to accept this love offer, even though you want it. When you have these chats and identify these caution areas, you might be like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. I remember I broke up with this. I had a, my first love, let's say, I don't know if he was my first love, but I thought he was my first love. Um, we were exploring the connection in my, I was in my mid twenties and yeah, we had this amazing connection, blah, blah, blah. And then I asked him and I said, do you, you know, do you think that we have a future together? Could you see us like getting married at some point? Because I really like you and I think we would make, you know, good partners or whatever. And he was like, no, my mum wants me to marry a woman who looks like a model, who's a millionaire and a scientist. And I was like, what? If I knew the phrase, go suck a dick, I would have said to him, go suck a dick. But I didn't know that phrase in those days. And even though I thought I was in love with him, I thought, well, we're not on the same page. Well, should I waste my time? I could be looking for someone who wants to get married. Why should I waste my time with him? Even though I was in love with him. And I broke up with him and I said, look, I can't continue with this connection because um, that's what I want. And I don't want to waste any more of my years in this. It's like a dead end connection for me. So can we just, I don't want to see you anymore in, uh, romantically because I want to find someone who wants to get married. And he was like, oh no, let's not burn bridges. He was disappointed, but we were friendly. It was a friendly breakup because we just weren't on the same page. He didn't do anything to me. I didn't feel that we, we didn't, you know, it wasn't a bad breakup. But, and I was broken hearted for a year, but I'm the one who broke up with him. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, are you willing to explore this connection knowing that there could come a point where you're on a different page and you could break up and you're gonna to have to deal with a year of heartbreak and move on, is it worth it for you? Or do you wanna not explore this connection, okay? And just be like, no, I wanna find someone who definitely wants to get married. Or do you not give a fuck whether it results in marriage or not, like me? That's up to you. You look at it, it's your individual unique desire you know what you want you know what you're capable of you know what you're, you're going to risk you know what heartbreak feels like are you willing to go through it if you end up on different pages it may well not it might end up in marriage but there's that 50 50 chance that it might not okay if they tell you i don't want a commitment now someone might tell you they want a commitment and then they change their mind it's not a guarantee you might date someone who says oh i really want a commitment and then like six months down the line they're like actually you're not the kind of person I want to marry, let's break up. So it's not a guarantee, but at least you know you're on the same page. That if it did work out, you could end up being married. But here, it might work out, and then you come to a point where you want to get married, and they're like, no, I told you I didn't want to get married. And you're like, oh, but I thought you'd change your mind. Well, I didn't. And then you're like, oh, shit. And you end up with a broken heart, okay? So that's up to you to check that out. The other thing you need to look at is, this love interest has a lot of lust for you. Like, it seems like this obsessive, huge, massive lust. I actually can feel it and sense it. And you need to look into whether, is it the lust for me that is driving them forward to be with me? Or is it because they genuinely, you know, respect my powerful womanhood and my amazing femininity and my caring and all this emotional connection that I feel that I built with this love interest? Or is it the lust that is overriding here? Or... You may find that the lust is a bit overpowering. There's something that there's caution about their lusty, or maybe they have a very high sex drive and you have a very low sex drive. There's something to do with looking to how much they lust after you. There's something that you need to look deeper into it. Are they a sex addict? Have they got a higher sex drive? All the things I mentioned, you know, try and look at your unique situation. It might not bother you. Maybe you've got a high sex drive and it's fine. But this card is just telling you, look into that. I don't know whether you need to check it. I don't know whether it's telling you maybe don't have sex with them straight away so that you can tell if it's an emotional connection or a lusty 
which one's driving them at the, the time that they come at you. Maybe you'll be like, I really do want to fuck you so badly, love interest, but can we wait a bit? I just, you know, I just want to check out the connection a bit more. Just in case they, they came at you in lust, they fuck you and then they start withdrawing again or something, you know. It's up to you. You want to fuck them straight away, fuck them. But if you have developed an emotional connection and you want to be sure they came back to you for the right reasons, maybe caution is warranted. Maybe think about delaying that. So look at your unique situation and see where this lust issue, caution uh, message is appearing in your unique situation, okay? Now it's clarified by the five of uh, spades, which is strife, okay? Um, and what it says here, your love interest, can only come to you when they're no longer fearing feel under pressure okay and the caution is be sure to observe the fears that arise because of your behaviors and desires and identify the areas and situations where either you or your love interest feel repressed and pressured by each other so do you feel pressured to have sex or do they feel pressured into a commitment or there's things that you need to identify where they pressure you and you feel repressed and pressured or you pressure them and they feel repressed and pressured okay because if you pressure them it's gonna run obviously this is a runner because i don't know i think masculine energies can't handle pressure they're not like feminine energies they're a bit i hate to use the word pussy like because a pussy belongs to a feminine and takes a good banging so i don't know what well, what are they they're a bit weaker anyway they can't they don't seem to have the same they can take pressure at work but they can't take pressure in the emotional realm let's just say that okay so they're going, there's going to be an issue with this pressure that you need you've got cautioned about so don't pressure them on an emotional level watch for sexual pressure i'm getting okay and it says here trust in your inner strength and go on your own way if you have to so you're going to have to stick to your guns if there's something that you feel pressured about that you don't want to give in okay and again if you find they're pressured by certain things you're cautioned not to trigger pressure in this love interest it's, it's inside information, so they don't do a runner. They need to feel safe, and if you see that what you're doing, you'd be like, oh, but Celestial Rose, it's barely anything, and they feel pressured. Well, that's their pressure level. I, I know someone, and there's a phrase in chicken, in chicken, <laughs> there's a phrase in, um, in Greek where um, it says that he drowns in a glass of water. It's trying to say that this person cannot even, feels like they're drowning in a glass of water. They can't take pressure, basically. A glass of water is drowning. Oh, I'm drowning, I'm drowning. I always imagine someone drowning in a glass of water and it makes me crack up. But it's trying to give you that visual that what might not be pressure for you, a glass of water is just a glass of water, is a whole shitload of pressure for someone else. So you'd be like, oh, so it's your eyes, I'm not pressuring them. All I did was this. Well, that's the glass of water. Just imagine your love interest drowning in a glass of water and whatever it is you did, that's what is too much pressure for them. So that's the caution. It will help your connection. It's not warning you away from your love interest. It's giving you inside information that identify what pressures them and just avoid it like the plague. Don't do that if that's going to pressure them and send them running to the hills. Okay, so that's your inside information. Now... We've got now an extra card, a bonus card. This fell out after Bridget, bitch it. After bitch it, Chantal fell out. Just to, I think, I don't know if it, if it, it fell out to, to give you hope again, because I find bitch it depressing. Look, Chantal is the romance card. Hang on. It's the romance card. Look, lovely card. New romance is imminent, either with a newcomer or through reignited passion in your existing relationship. 
be open to giving and receiving love. And it was clarified by my giant passion heart, just to make it make you feel better, and my charm for that you're rare. So your love interest is passion is being reignited. They've got passionate feelings for you. Massive passionate love feelings for you, okay? Or whatever this is. Hot. And they, they see you as somebody rare. They've never met anyone like you before. You're rare, diamond. You're a rare diamond, diamond. <laughs> you are. And it's probably because you're a mixture between these two you know how to balance out your masculine and feminine energies. You know your boundaries. You've got your limits. You've got your self-respect. You've got your dignity. But then you're loving, giving, supportive, receptive, submissive, and all that. But in an appropriate situation, situation appropriately, you're not doing it at the wrong time. You're not being submissive when someone's crossing your boundaries. No. You're like, yeah, no. Well, you're not that rude. You won't be rude. But, you know, no. It's like, no. No, oh, no, no, unacceptable, unacceptable. But then when they've done something and they feel bad, you're always submissive, receptive, supportive, and they're like, oh shit, she didn't give me a bollocking for that. She's very understanding. And that makes you rare because someone else would give them a bollocking. Oh, you ghosted me. And you're like, hey, I respect your need for space and support you in your endeavor. You're like that. That's what I'm, you know, so that's what, what I'm getting for, for that. You're rare. <laughs> diamond. A rare diamond. Now these are clarified strangely by the King of Spades, who I know is a, an action taker to love interests, and the Ace of Cups, which is love is in the air cup. You cannot make it up. They, they just fall out like this. Seriously, they really do. So, your love interest, according to the King of Wands or the King of Spades or whatever the fuck it's called, your love interest will give entire power and dynamic to this connection. Now, obviously in my vision in the beginning, he was feeling a bit miffed at dragging the weight. But anyway, let's just say that we clarified it with my clairvoyant vision that I don't know about dynamic energy, but he's definitely moving forward with, you know, with doing it. Um, this will demand total commitment and all the power within him himself to take the next important step your love interest is motivated and prepared to sweep negativity fears difficulties and obstacles out of the way in order to achieve his goals for this connection Ooh, how the tables have turned this masculine is encouraged to set free his creative and sexual fire energy i don't think he needs encouragement by the looks of this reading he feels a bit lusty like he's going to come at the diamond and just pin her down and fuck her blind anyway so you my diamond desire these qualities in your masculine love interest here is a little secret the external qualities that attract you or which you feel are lacking around you are inner qualities that you need to develop for yourself which is what you did you do want um to be cared for nurtured spoiled uh, relax and enjoy your your life so you've given it to yourself so you have done that and this is what has attracted your love interest so that's confirming that by looking after yourself you have helped attract your love interest and set him into his masculine energy okay so it does say this. For example, if you need to feel cared for, you must also learn to give yourself self-care. Well, we've established that with the tranquility card here. So that's what you've done. Um, it says here, if you are the feminine, develop the qualities you seek in yourself. And that way, you also support your masculine love interest to develop their own masculine qualities. So basically, by doing this, you have... Um, you have made somehow energetically made your masculine love interest develop their own masculine qualities because they have to be a man now <laughs> according to my clairvoyant vision they're dragging you along they have to be the man they can't just be there like be the little weak willy winky that they were before now then it's clarified this new romance is imminent through reignited passion in your existing relationship be open to giving and receiving love and then you've got this card represents love itself, the Ace of Cups. Love that is unbounded and free, an all-embracing giving love which can develop fully and totally with tenderness, bliss, silence, 
wonder, love and light. I like the way silence is in there. Because <laughs> silence is also love. I support your need for space. I'm silent because I support your need for space, basically. You may be surprised to learn that such a love is possible in your love connection. Not somewhere in the distant future, but here and now. See a big word, here and now. The racehorse, success, victory, out of the blue, victory, blah, blah, blah. Oh, come on, how, mu how much more info do you need? Sit in your little tub, in your little Epsom salt bath and try and imagine this reading or play it over and over or something. Put, play it on repeat and help give yourself that because you kind of lost you had some small thoughts and thought you were failing and you kind of thought you gave up but you left the door open and yeah but no but yeah but no but but this is all yeah 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 victory success victory success romance love is in the air taking action blah 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 a few warnings here and there blah 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 but mainly yeah victory and on that very exciting positive note my glorious celestial diamonds i hope you enjoyed this reading and you feel more empowered I wish you love, luck and happiness and lots of hot, lusty, consensual sex. Love you guys.